Hey, this is Dave DeVoe. Would you like to access private capital so that you can buy more properties and scale your real estate business? Then check out my brand new podcast. It's called the How to Raise Capital 101 Show. Now, the first nine episodes are a mini course on how to raise six figures in a matter of weeks and seven figures in a matter of months, even if you're starting from scratch. So you can find this new show. Again, it's called the How to Raise Capital 101 Show wherever you listen to podcasts. Or feel free to visit us at RaiseCapital101Show.com. Hey everybody, Dave DeBow here, Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever thought it would be really cool to have your own fund? What do I mean by fund? A fund of capital that you can access for doing your deals. A lot of people think about that. A lot of people have asked me questions about this. I don't have the faintest clue about creating a fund, but our guest today definitely does. Lisa Hilton is a real estate investor. She uh, She's started her own funds. She works in funds. She knows all about funds, and she's a fun person. So Lisa, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Great to have you here. Great to be here, Dave. Happy to be here. Excellent. So Lisa, this our podcasts are pretty short and sweet. So first of all, why don't we start off with the basics? How would you define a fund when it comes to capital and real estate investing? Yeah. So a traditional definition of a fund is an entity that pools capital to buy um, a bunch of different assets. Um, most traditionally funds are typically blind and most people are, are investing in funds today via their 401k. Um, so they're either in some kind of target date retirement fund at Fidelity or Schwab or anything of that nature, or they might be investing in um, index funds, which is very popular, you know, in the finance space, investing in, um, you know, index funds, but real estate um, you can create funds to invest in real estate, both from a blind perspective, as well as from the perspective of being able to choose, um, allowing your investors to choose what investments they want to invest in. All right. So let's let's back up just a little bit and unwrap this a bit. So most people are directly or indirectly familiar with funds because that's where mutual funds Correct. come in. A lot of our followers are Canadians. Canadians love their mutual funds. I have no idea why. They make no sense whatsoever to me. Uh, the only ones that seem to make any money on mutual funds are the people that sell them. Uh, but anyhow, don't get me off on a tangent there. So, but but we know what a fund is. Right. But I think most people didn't know that it's possible to have a fund or create your own fund for investing in real estate. Or if they thought about having a fund, they thought, hey, you know what? Only those big guys like the Schwabs right. and the investors group guys here in Canada and whatnot are big enough to have funds that's way beyond my scope. Is this something that's actually doable for what I affectionately call us as mom and pop real estate investors? Yeah, it is. It is very doable. Um, Every day people can do it. So, And it's not going to cost us an arm and a leg and our firstborn child to set one of these suckers up? It's, it's... Um, no, it's very similar to setting up a syndication in okay. terms of price. So if you're going to set up a syndication, you're already going to spend money to set up an offering, a syndication offering. So mm -hmm. it's going to be in the same ballpark region by and large of um, setting up a syndication offering. All right. Um, so and for those folks that aren't familiar... Go... Go Unless ahead. you decide to go with one of the big time lawyers, then you could be looking at like a hundred thousand. But then that's the same thing if you decide to go with any of the big time lawyers to do a syndication offering as well. Okay, so that's 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 good to know. So more or less, and I'm not going to hold you to this, Lisa, because yeah. things change all the time. But what's the you know realistic ballpark cost of setting up a fund? Uh, anywhere between 10 to 20, 20,000 to set up a fund, depending okay. on the attorney you decide to go with. All right. Now I'm not going to hold you this either because we've got to do the cover our butt situation yeah. here. You're not a, you're not a lawyer, not getting legal advice, none of that good yeah. stuff, right? We're just talking high level here. Okay. So let's say we decide we want to start a fund and we find a lawyer that can do it for 10 or 20 grand and we get that going. Typically, what does that look like as far as who we can get to invest in our fund? Who, 
who are we allowed to bring on as investors with our real estate fund? Yeah, great question. So it depends on the the regulation that you set your you ask the lawyer to set your fund up under. Okay. So if you do the Reg A D five hundred six B as in boy offering, then it will only be people that you have had pre existing relationship with, and in my opinion, before you started your fund. That's in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, different people might choose that it's when they have a deal, but I think it's when you start your fund. So if you start, bottom line is people. It's people that you know and who know you. That's right. You've okay. had, you know you've had a relationship with. It can't be someone that you just met today. Five hundred six B for buddies. Buddies, exactly. Um, Now, if you set up a fund underneath the 506C rules, then that's open for accredited investors. You can keep raising, meet people. You know, the rules um, are different for those ones. So that's who can come into your fund. All right. Very good. Now, I know that you've got a lot of experience doing these kind of funds and that you've walked other people through setting up these kind of funds. Mm -hmm. Typically, what are people getting started with? The 506B for buddies, is, is that kind of the, the easiest way to get going with this? What are your thoughts? Yeah, great question. I think that it starts a little bit before that. It starts with, you know, where are you at in your journey right now? Um, are you Is your situation um, where you know a lot of people who can write half a million or $100,000 checks? Um, And if that's the case, then, you know, and they trust you because maybe you have a track record already doing a lot of this kind of activity. Um, Like maybe when I say this kind of activity, I mean, you have a track record buying real estate. Maybe you've done a couple single, um, maybe you've done joint joint ventures and maybe a couple um, single syndications. And now you're like, okay, people see what you're doing and you keep doing the same thing. It's very, your BIPOC, your investment box is very defined and clear. Yep. Then you then come to your, your investor base and you're like, Hey, listen, we are preparing to put together a fund. What do you think? And they say, yeah, I love it. Um, I'm interested in investing. I love the idea. And then if that's the case, then that's where, you know, um, like creating a fund, like making, creating a blind fund would sort of make sense for that situation because yeah. you have track record to support what it is that you're doing of to course. the extent that your blind fund is going to be buying what you've already proven that you can do. Right. So to the extent that that is what you're going to be doing now for the individuals who are thinking, oh, you know, well, I'm just getting started you know, in my journey of raising capital and, you know, uh, or, you know, maybe you're just getting started in your journey of like deciding to operate or whatever the case is there. Um, What I would say is if you're focused on raising capital, I think it's prudent to think about the fact that, you know, when you're co-GPing, you need to be doing an active role on these deals. Um, And if you're not, then, you know, you're opening yourself up to SEC, potentially violating the rules of the SEC. So one of the ways I think that you can sort of um, properly sort of avoid that without getting into the realm of being a broker dealer and going and getting your license so you could get paid for raising capital is, you know, creating your own entity where you're managing that entity. And there are options where you can either create your own fund if you have the experience to take care of it, um, you know, in terms of like calling the capital, making distributions out to investors, or there's a lot of other platforms out there that will that are able to provide these services and sort of help you along the way. So where you can then have, you can provide your investors with more of a customizable experience that might have lower investment minimums, which, you know, think about it. When people are just getting started in syndication, many times they're going to start with a 506B type offering, B as in buddies. Yeah. Um, and they might typically have a low or investment minimum, you're talking 20, 25K. Um, And they might also do very favorable splits to LPs. Like they're not going to come in here and do like a 50-50. Usually you're going to see a 50-50 with very experienced operators. Whereas people who are just starting out, they might do maybe a 90-10 or an 80-20. You know, in favor of their investors. In favor of their investors. Right. Um, And they might choose to not have an acquisition fee and they might, you know, they'll waive certain kinds of fees. The same thing applies when you are 
you know, thinking about creating a fund entity, you have the ability to control that experience and that's enabling you to build your track record um, and stay above board with the SEC, in my opinion. Yeah, good, good. Very, very good points. Wow, that's another fantastic idea. Hold on to that thought for a sec. We'll be right back. Now, are you a real estate investor who's ran out of cash or credit to grow your portfolio? Are you looking to grow your portfolio using other people's money and raising capital? Well, I want to show you how to raise six figures or more in six weeks or less at my upcoming Investor Attraction Workshop. You can get your ticket and find out all about it at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. We're going to spend a full day taking a deep dive into this roadmap that I've used to raise millions for my deals, and I've helped other people just like you cumulatively raise hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for their deals as well. So again, you can check that out at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. And as a loyal listener to the podcast, you'll get 50% off your ticket when you use the discount code PODCAST. That's right, discount code PODCAST at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. See you at the next workshop. So... What I'm hearing, Lisa, is looking at a fund really makes sense once you've already got a bit of a track record, you've worked with investors, joint venture partners, maybe a few smaller syndications. Now you're ready to step up. You've got proof in the pudding. You've got a group of people that you can reach out to. So when you're when people are usually starting their funds, are they usually doing the 506B or the C? kind of focus first. I would guess. Yeah. So just to touch back on that last point, I think that if you're planning on doing a blind fund, then what you just said is a hundred percent accurate. Now, if you're just getting started, I think that it's still possible to do a fund, but do one where you allow your investors to determine what deals they put their money into. So do they have to, so each individual investor can decide which deal yeah. they want to invest in. Okay. Correct. Okay. Whereas they, so that enables them to sort of choose as opposed to saying that they're going to allow you to be the one uh, um, like sort of managing all of their money. Right. So if that makes sense. And then- now is, that, is that a lot more cumbersome and, and expensive to set something like that up or is it pretty much the same either way? It's in the same ballpark um, and there is support. There's So like if you come from like, if you're like someone like me that comes from the fun space, like I've been pretty much assume, like, assume everybody watching this does not come from the sub funds. <laughs> right. So, so, so if that. they don't come, there are so many resources out there. There are companies that man that can manage the entire process, um, as well as there are companies that set up platforms that are super user friendly that allow investors to come in and be able to choose what investments they want to invest in. Um, so like, there's just so much that's available out there that um, for people. So yeah, just want to put it out there. Yeah. Very, very cool. No. Um, but I didn't answer your, qu- your last question. Um, I don't think I forgot what Go it was. Though. <laughs> <laughs> so did I, Lisa. Go off yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you were asking me if most people start with a 506C yeah. yeah, or yeah. 506C first. Yes. So that's really, really good question. Um, I think that if you're going to do like um, a single syndication, um, then like for me, I think with funds, I would go with C. I would do accredited investors because you want the purpose of the fund is being able to raise over a period of time. And continue to have that ability to keep, as you meet investors, you might have opportunities to give to them, right? And that is something that like is hard to do when your fund is a, is a buddy, right? A B, Mm. right? Whereas when your fund is a C for accredited investors, you could potentially always have opportunities because you can seed some of those opportunities and then ultimately provide them as you meet investors, which enables you to build your ability to raise because as people um, invest with you and they see your track record and they see that you are performing and providing returns, then it's like, okay, well, yeah, this person is actually, you know, doing what they said that they're going to be doing and it helps. Yeah. yeah. Good points. Lisa, this is, this is really, really interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm in, in, always interested in raising capital. This has opened (laughs) up a whole new kind of food for thought area for me. That's for sure. So way too deep to get into it in depth here on a short interview. If people want to find out more about you, what you're up to, I know you've got 
support. You've got training around this. You've got your own yes. podcast, the Level Up REI podcast. Where can people find out more about you, connect with you, and perhaps get some help if they want to? Yeah, send their own totally, phone? totally. So one stop shop place to go is lisahilton.com. And that's Hilton like the hotel, only thing with a Y. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so that's lisahilton.com. You can go there. My podcast is there. I have blogs. And then at the very bottom of the first page is the link to um, the fund manager accelerator, which for people who are listening to this and you're intrigued and you'd like to learn more about how funds could work for you, then that is an evergreen course that can enable you to learn more. Um, and then, yeah, I have my own fund as well. It's for accredited investors. It's the Hilton Multifamily Fund One. Um, so once again, if you go to lisahilton.com, you know, click the link to invest with Lisa, like you'll learn um, a lots of information about it. And to the extent that you want to learn more, you'll, we can get on a call and talk about it as well. Excellent. Very good. So you go. we'll have that in the show notes. Again, that's uh, Lisa Hilton with a Y dot com. Lisa, thanks so much. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you. All right, everybody. See you on our next episode. Well, hey there. Thanks for tuning into the Property Profits Podcast. If you like this episode, that's great. Please go ahead and subscribe on iTunes. Give us a good review. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're looking to attract investors and raise capital for your deals, then I'm going to invite you to get a complimentary copy of my newest book right back there. There it is. The Money Partner Formula. You can get a PDF version at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Again, InvestorAttractionBook.com. Take care.